A fruit-eating bird, it spends its life in the highest trees and hence is seldom seen. However it is often heard, for its call, a series of repeated, gradually accelerating talks ending in a burst of insane laughter, can be heard for nearly a mile. Due to the difficulty in observing this bird, almost nothing is known of its nesting habits. But presumably it behaves like its other hornbill relatives, which means that the male shuts up his mate in a hollow tree, plastering up the entrance to keep her a prisoner until the young ones are hatched and able to fend for themselves. Meanwhile, he comes at intervals to feed mother and young with packages of partially digested fruits served up in the cast-off lining of his gizzard, but with all its other peculiarities, the most unique thing about Rhinoplax Vigil is its cask or helmet not present on the very young birds, this gradually grows upward from the base of the beak over the front of the skull. The bones of the skull behind it are cleverly formed so as to brace the cask and give it a maximum of striking power while cushioning the brain against the shock of impact. One blow of the bird's beak, backed by this natural hammer on the end of the supple neck, would probably be fatal to a man if it struck him on the head, the red ivory trade, the cask of the helmeted hornbill has today pushed this species to the brink of extinction, as human greed and demand for the decorative ornaments and jewelry made from the casks of the hornbill, known as, red ivory, has led to the widespread slaughter of the members of this species. Culling of the birds for red ivory began as early as 2000 years ago, when natives of Borneo used to create ornaments out of the casks of killed hornbills. Trade with China began sometime around 700 AD, and continued until World War II, after which it nearly completely declined. Snuff boxes, belt buckles, figurines, and jewelry were just some of the products manufactured from hornbill-derived red. The severity of the threat, today, sufficient data regarding the exact number of the helmeted hornbills living in their native habitat is lacking. However, from crime report data, some idea regarding the number of birds lost each year can be easily estimated, it states that every month around 500 of these birds become the victims of poaching in Indonesia's Kalimantan province alone. From this it is quite easily understandable that these birds are disappearing at an alarming pace which if allowed to continue, will lead to the complete demise of these birds in the near future. Another significant move to conserve the bird was the recent launch of Hornbill Nest Adoption Program, a novel idea of DFO Tana Tapi to conserve and protect hornbill nests in forest areas outside the pack reserve. The introduction of the HNAP is an added endeavor of the state's Department of Environment and Forest, Principal Chief Conservator of Forest, Wildlife Biodiversity, JL Singh said. This will not only give a new lease of life to the endangered species, the state bird of Arunachal Pradesh, and boost their population but could be considered as a glaring example of the public-private partnership PPP, model, he said. Tappy said that HNAP was aimed at ensuring conservation of hornbill population, noting that hornbill nesting habitat was being degraded because of loss and shortage of nesting sites outside the protected areas, it will extend protection and monitoring. Efforts outside the park with the involvement of the locals. Tappy Reason The forest around PTRWS harbors four hornbill species Great Hornbills, Wreathed, Oriental Pied and the Rufus Necked, listed in the 10th schedule of the Wildlife Protection Act, 1972, while the last variety is a globally threatened bird species, he disclosed.